The situation in Bolivia is an opportunity to show something that I've tried to show in another avenue of discussion on the channel. Now, I have made no secret that I am no fan of the R or the D wings of DC. Because that handcuffs the American people. You don't get what's best, you just get what's left. Because that's what term limits do. Now, I'm, a lot of people are like, wait, what, what are you talking about, term limits? One of the reasons that the vote in Bolivia was seen to be fraudulent or he was seen as not being able to win was because he had run for a fourth term. And apparently they have term limits that prohibit that. Nevertheless, the group of people that supported him was by far the largest in the country. There were other groups that didn't like him, but they were fractured, just like Venezuela. And they could never get on the same sheet of music. That's another reason things failed in Venezuela. Even Mike Pompeo said so. There's Hugo Chavez, Nicolas Maduro, and the Chavistas, one big giant group of people, and then there's 15 or 16 others that dislike each other as much as they disliked him. And you could never get them together. What's happened here in Bolivia is just they succeeded because they were able to somehow get into the military at the highest levels, and the leader of the military asked for the sake of the peace of the country if Mr. Morales would abdicate and go to Mexico. And make no mistake, he wasn't overthrown. He left of his own accord. He could have stayed. would have cost a lot of lives. Now, what does that have to do with D.C.? What does that have to do with our two-party two system? Pardon me. I have made the allegation that the only way we are going to save ourselves as people is to reduce our governance down to the state level and below. I also made the statement yesterday that we have seven states in our union that have more people than Bolivia. We have states in our union that have more people than Colombia and Venezuela. California has 40 million people. Here in Florida, we got over 30 million people. That's larger than Peru. That's larger than Ecuador. Larger than Uruguay. Larger than Paraguay. We are, in essence, we are a bunch of small countries. Because what we define as good governance here in Florida isn't defined as good governance in Washington state. And that doesn't make us right and them wrong. It makes us right for us and what they believe is right for them. God bless them both. Now, to prove that this can be the case, let me share this from Florida. One second. Get my screen to cooperate with me here. Lake County, Florida. First, to declare itself a Second Amendment sanctuary, like that should be necessary, but they did it. On Tuesday, Lake County became the first Florida county to declare itself a Second Amendment sanctuary. Resolution passed 4-0. Commissioner Josh Blake said the resolution was proposed because of the ongoing national debate over gun control, blah, 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 blah. It reads in part, the right of the people to keep their arms in defense of themselves and of the lawful authority of the state shall not be infringed except that the manner of bearing arms may be regulated by law by the state. You see, this is the point. Lake County has thrown down and said, you know what? This is what our people believe. We don't care what the people of Orlando believe. We don't care what the people of Miami believe. This is what we believe. This is what we're going to do. And we're not going to put one red cent toward any effort to infringe upon the rights of the people. Now, real quick, for those of you <clears throat> that are unaware of the lay of the land of Florida, Lake County is kind of this no-man's land between Orlando and Ocala. It's called Lake County for a reason. There's just a bunch of huge lakes there. It's somewhat rural. Just to show you here, here's orange right here. It's kind of outlined in blue, which is weird, but... And then you have Marion County up here where Ocala is. And then you have Lake. Now, 
I want to do something and show you guys something that's actually kind of more funny than anything else. So here is Lake County. Now, it's just a bunch of lakes. The center part of Florida, other than Orlando, you would think you're in the Midwest. You would think you're in the ancient Midwest, meaning that there are parts of Florida, the center part, where you could be looking at things and they would be just as they appeared 300 years ago. It's an incredibly historic, wonderful place to visit. And these people have the right to govern themselves however they want to. People of Texas, you too. People of Missouri, you too. People of Idaho, people of New York. It doesn't make us a banana republic because we have groups of people, large groups of people, that want to govern and live differently. Let it be so. And then just let everybody be informed. If for some reason I would find myself needing to travel through another state where the governance was very different than the state I live in, it would be incumbent upon me to educate myself so that I didn't trespass upon those laws. That's our only hope. Now, here's something kind of fun that I think you guys will really find um, entertaining. We're out here in the Ocala National Forest. And I stumbled upon this because I just wasn't sure what it was right away, but I had an idea and I was right. It's a, it's a firing range for, I believe, the U.S. Navy. Um, I'm sure they have a reason for it looking like it does, but they had a guy here that did something kind of funny, and I think you guys will appreciate it. Now, I'm sure the authorities for this place had no idea the guy parked the trailers this way, but it's just something I thought was, was hilarious. But you've got a uh, different aircraft on the ground here, and up here there is a. Uh, that kind of gives it away. What it is, and in another region over here, when you zoom in real close at what's happening, you can tell very clearly that they are using this as some type of a firing range because I'm pretty sure that's a tank turret. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, it's not too hard to find, you know, using Google Earth for yourself. I probably shouldn't have to give you the coordinates. Just find Basically, you got Orlando and just go north into the Ocala National Forest and you'll find this huge spot that looks like it's just burned out and you can see this stuff for yourself. But if you ever have the chance to visit Florida other than to go to Disney or go to the beach or whatever, the center part is an amazing walk back in time. It really is. It is not uncommon to visit little towns and see graveyards that have burials from the late 1700s, early 1800s, and even farther back. Here in St. Augustine, we have one that goes back into the 1600s. The city was founded in 1565, and the story of St. Augustine, and it's called modern-day Jacksonville now, but at the time it was called Fort Caroline. The French had settled it. And that violated a treaty between the French and the Spanish. I had mentioned before that the entire east coast of the United States, from Nova Scotia all the way down uh, around the tip of Florida, through the Gulf, all the way over to Texas, Louisiana, was all referred to as La Florida. And it was their property. They claimed it. And it was that way from, oh my goodness, the, well, I guess the late 1400s, all the way through the 1500s, the Spanish were here for 200 years before the English showed any interest at all. And, you know, during the time of King Henry VIII, um, right near the time of the Reformation, the Spanish were by far, 
and away the wealthiest nation on the planet. And we see this today. I mean, when you really think about it, how many nations in this hemisphere speak Spanish or French versus how many nations speak English? There's 600 million people south of our border going all the way down to the tip of Argentina, and they either speak Spanish or Portuguese. Historically, I think that's how the hemisphere is going to be remembered based on the way D.C. and New York have taken us right down into the gutter. But anyway, I will leave that there. Like, share, subscribe. Have a great week. We'll see you next time.